Is it ready? Hey, good evening. And tonight we're going to be doing favorite hymn night. So you can either call out a number or a name. A number or a name if you can't find the number fast enough. And so what would y'all like to begin with tonight? Because he lives. 405 or 407? Hmm? Yeah. 407. <laughs> Aren't you thankful he holds the future? Amen. Amen. He's alive, and it's awesome that we can celebrate who Jesus is tonight. And so let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We thank you for the privilege and honor that you've given us together in this place of worship tonight. And just to be able to sing praises to your holy name. And thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you that you do control our futures. We thank you for your word that reminds us of what the future holds for us that have trusted in you as our Lord and Savior. And so we ask that the Holy Spirit would just move in a wonderful way tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, anyone else? Yes, Miss Mary. 644. Count your blessings. That's a good one. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, thank them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Blessings came them one by one. Down to blessings, see what God hath done. Down to blessings, came them one by one. Count to many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings. 
blessings angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, hang them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. God has done. Anyone else? Which one? 550. Anybody else? 
177. <clears throat> There's something about that name. great song selection tonight. Enjoy those songs that you picked out in relation to Count Your Many Blessings, Because He Lives, something about the name of Jesus. Isn't it just wonderful to be able to mention the name of Jesus and all that He's done for us? Take your Bibles tonight and find Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Tonight we're going to be talking about the subject, An Invitation to Discipleship. An Invitation to to discipleship. In Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 through 50, we see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has his own family controversy. Now, don't raise your hand, but I want you to think about this. Have you ever experienced your own family controversy? Uh, my experience in life is that oftentimes when, when a member of the family dies, uh, that can be a time of tension. It can be a time of controversy. But if we know that our Lord and Savior had His share of family controversy, it should make us feel at ease to know that He's gone through the things that we've gone through, and we should be comforted by that fact. The Bible says here in Matthew chapter 12, verse 46, While He was still talking to the multitudes, behold, His mother and brothers stood outside seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Tonight we do have an invitation of discipleship. You can study the life of Jesus and see that the closer He got to the cross, the more people deserted Him along the way. 
when he was doing signs and miracles, the crowds followed him, and they wanted to see what he was going to do next. Oftentimes, they had their own physical disabilities where they wanted Jesus to heal them and to touch them. But as Jesus gets closer to the cross, and the more he talks about discipleship, the less followers he has. In fact, the Bible even tells us, leading up to the point of the cross, that many of his apostles deserted him and they were running for their lives. But Jesus knew what his plan and purpose in life was. It was ultimately to be crucified on the cross for the sins of the world. And he said, whoever calls upon my name and trusts in me will be saved. So he gives an invitation for discipleship. Now, most of the time when it comes to discipleship, we need to think along these lines. Uh, To be a disciple means to be disciplined. Uh, You've heard about the spiritual disciplines in life. One of the spiritual disciplines that we have is prayer. It takes discipline to be a person of prayer. You have to set aside time to pray and, and to seek the Lord. It takes time to discipline yourself to be able to study your Bible and to spend time alone with the Lord. It takes a certain discipline to set aside Sunday nights to be able to come and worship the Lord and make sure that nothing interferes with our worship of the Lord. It takes a certain amount of discipline to say that no matter what I experience in my life, I'm going to follow Jesus all the days of my life. Even though my friends and family members may desert me, I'm going to follow Jesus all the days of my life. Uh, Jesus said, unless we take up our cross and follow after him, we cannot be what? One of his disciples. Uh, We have to be devoted to who Jesus is. And I would say, especially in this day and time, in in the United States of America, we have to decide if we're truly going to follow Jesus or the things of this world. So here... Jesus gives an invitation for discipleship. Secondly, I want you to see something here. He says in verse 48, But he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Have you ever been in a situation where you, you had family members that wanted preferential treatment? Where they wanted preferential treatment. Maybe, maybe you're in a situation where a, a police officer pulls over, pulls you over, and you say, well, I know so-and-so. And you're hoping by mentioning that name that the officer will let you off the hook. Or, or maybe you're wanting to get some type of, of loan or, or have some type of perk, and so you mention family members. Uh, it's Jesus is having this encounter with his family members here. Uh, he makes it a point to, to say that they don't deserve any preferential treatment. And I think he's also making this statement here by what he's saying in this moment. Human kinship doesn't take priority over spiritual kinship. We have family members. Uh, We have our, our, our lineage and people that we are related to, whether good, bad, or indifferent. They are our family. Uh, we can't change who our family is, uh, who we are born to and, and who we interact with. But Jesus is saying that spiritual kinship is more important than that physical kinship. Your spiritual family is going to be with you forever. We are really a part of the family of God. And so as his mother and brothers are wanting to come and interact with him, he says, this is my opportunity to say to those that are watching that this is my family right here. Now you say, well, that's unusual for Jesus to say that. Well, turn, if you would, to the Gospel of John chapter 7. Because the family of Jesus Christ, his brothers did not believe in in him until after he resurrected. The Bible says in John chapter 7 verse 1, After these things Jesus walked into Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. 
Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brothers, therefore, said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. And then listen to this. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Now doesn't that just blow your mind to think that Jesus' earthly brothers did not believe that he was the Messiah? They had walked with him, they had experienced life with him, and yet they did not believe he was the Messiah. I've made this statement over the years. Oftentimes, the people that we are the most familiar with, we oftentimes overlook God's potential in those people's lives. We say, well, I know that person. I've known them for a long time, and so no big deal. I I think Jesus, as he was growing up, and his brothers were interacting with him, and they knew that there was something different about him, yet they, they did not put their trust in him until after the resurrection. In fact, just imagine yourself with with Jesus being one of your family members and how hard is it going to be to live up to Jesus? (laughs) You can't do it. Yet they looked at his humanity and said, hey, he's just like us. He puts on his clothes just like us. He goes where we go. He does what we do. There's nothing special about Jesus. Oh, but there was something very special about Jesus. He was about the Father's business while He was here on this earth. So I want you to think about our spiritual kinship. The way that we're a part of the family of God is that we have to put our trust and faith in Jesus Christ. And when we put our trust and faith in Jesus Christ, we are a family that may be separated by death, but will be together forever and ever. So, Roger and I are going to be together forever and ever. There's no escaping me, Roger. We are in Christ Jesus. We will be together forever and ever. And so, when we know Christ and we've we've trusted in Him, we can rejoice in that fact that spiritual kinship is far more important than physical kinship. Now, we we grew up in the South, and we put a high priority on family earthly family and you'll hear people say things like this family has to be number one listen to me family is not to be number one jesus christ is to be number one so people have to make decisions when it comes to following after jesus in relation to that truth that jesus demands preeminence in our life preeminence in our life he wants to be first place And if Jesus, when he was on this earth, was showing people when his mother and brothers came to him and wanted to speak to them, wanted to speak to him, and he said, no, I'm going to speak to my spiritual family here. These are my disciples. He realized that those disciples that were in front of him were valuable to him. Now he says in verse 50, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. You want to know who's truly a follower, a disciple of Christ? Do they do the will of the Father in their life? It's real easy. You've heard me say this over the years. It's real easy for people to say that they know Christ. But how do they live their life? What actions do they take? What are they doing privately? What are they doing publicly? You see, the will of God is obedience to God's commandments by following Jesus. Are we obedient to the commandments of God? Do we go and make disciples of all the nations? That's a commandment. That is the Great Commission. Do we seek to lead others to Christ? Do we pray that people will be saved? Do we invite people to come to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are we intentional in how we live our daily life for Jesus? You see, 
when we are about doing the Father's will as Jesus was, we are obedient to His commands by following Jesus. Now this week, you're going to go places. You're going to see people. And as you go places and see people, are you going to look for spiritual opportunities to be able to share with people who Jesus is? As people look at your life, are they going to be able to see Jesus in you by how you live? You see, when we're about the will of God, we are seeking to please Him. And as Jesus was here on this earth, we see several instances where we hear God the Father say, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. When Jesus was baptized, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, like a dove, lit upon His body, and there was a voice from heaven saying, This is My Son in whom I'm well pleased. And we see Jesus promoting doing the Father's will. And our prayer should be that God's will, the Father's will, would be done on earth as it is where? In heaven. What is the Father's will in heaven should be our desire to see the Father's will done here on earth. Does He want to see people saved? Does He want to see a transformation in people's lives? Does He want to see us make a difference? Jesus knew about what His purpose was. And then thirdly, believers should care for each other. Believers should care for each other. If we are family that will live together forever, then we should care for each other. If we provide for the needs and necessities of our earthly family, how much more should we be willing to help our spiritual family? You see, Jesus said, you'll, you'll know that they are my disciples if they have what? Love for one another. If you don't have love, unconditional love for one another, it is revealing that you do not know Christ. Because if you know Christ, you know that God is love, and because God is love, you love others. The commandment is, you shall love your neighbor as you love who? Yourself. And let's be honest, we love ourselves. We, we want the best for ourselves. But as we love ourselves, we love others. And we have warm relationships with each other. Jesus had an earthly mother, an earthly father. He had brothers and, and people that He interacted with. But for three and a half years, He devoted Himself to His apostles teaching them, training them, spending time on the water with them, teaching them what their responsibility is because He was getting ready to go and yet He wanted to tell them when He is gone what they should be doing while He's in heaven. Warm relationships are an indication of where we are in Christ. My mother and I were reminiscing about when I grew up in church. Uh, we would spend time on, on Sunday nights after church with our church family. Uh, we would have fellowship with each other at someone's house. And we just enjoyed the, the intimacy that we had with one another. Uh, I remember that's when I was introduced to buttermilk pie. I would not touch it with a 10-foot pole because it was called buttermilk pie. But one day I said, Hey, I'm going to try this thing called buttermilk pie. Miss Marianne, I've been eating it ever since. Yes, ma'am. So it's that intimacy. It's those warm relationships that we have. It's why oftentimes when people come to a 
a, a setting where there's not as many people, they say, man, it's very warm, it's, it's very receptive. I don't feel like I'm just a number that's blending in with the crowd. And so it is with Christ. He was teaching them that whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. When we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we get a new family. A new family. Now, I like to tell people this. Uh, our, our family is oftentimes dysfunctional. We have different likes. We have different dislikes. But we come together under the banner of Jesus Christ because we've trusted in Him as our personal Lord and Savior, we receive a new family. And I'll tell you, it's the best family in all the world. We pray for each other. We encourage each other. We help each other throughout life. Some of the best relationships that I've ever known in life is the relationship with my pastor, with deacons, with church members, even sometimes, to be honest with you, closer than my earthly family. Why? Because some of my earthly family still don't know Christ. And I'm trying to lead them to Christ. I'm trying to look for opportunities to share the gospel with them so that they can get saved. I still have a relationship with them, but it doesn't have the same intimacy as our spiritual family does. So, intentional discipleship. I thank you for being here on a Sunday night because at least it reveals that you're wanting to seek God and to know Him and to follow closer to Him by worshiping Him. So with every head bowed, with every eye closed, I want to have the invitation tonight like this. There may be people watching online. There may be even someone in this building tonight that you've never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Give your life to Jesus. Admit to Him that you're a sinner. Surrender your life to Him. And you will become a part of the family of God. And there's nothing like the family of God. For others of you that are watching online or you're here in this building tonight, you say, I, I know Jesus. I've trusted in Him. And let, let me ask you this. Where are you in your priorities in life? Is Jesus number one? Does your spiritual family have more value, as Jesus was saying here, than your earthly family? Ask Jesus to help you put things in proper priorities tonight. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for the privilege to worship you I thank you for every person that's here and those that are watching online and those that we will encounter this week. Help us to share your love with them. Help us to be reminded that the spiritual family lives on and on and on for all of eternity. We thank you for that. We look forward to all that you have in store for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to stand. Melanie's going to play. And let the Spirit lead you during this time as to maybe you want me to pray for you. Maybe you want to come to the steps here and you want to pray. We'll just let the Spirit lead and you be obedient as she plays. You come.
You may be seated. For those of you that have watched us online, thank you for being a part of this service. This Wednesday night, we'll continue with our study on the book of Ephesians. And so if you're able to be here in person, that's wonderful. Invite someone to be a part of this service. Have a wonderful week.